we're in Boulder, we just finished brunch. But basically, we just got a notification. I appreciate everybody that subscribed so far and I definitely wanna keep growing. Paco Lopez just subscribed four minutes ago. He is our 100th subscriber. It's a call for celebration. Thank you for everybody that subscribed so far. Um, we'll keep putting out content. We'll keep listening to you guys, whatever you guys wanna see about the Tesla or any other gadgets that we, we play around with. Uh, talking about gadgets, we were actually on the way to Just want to rewind before we get into the video. Welcome back to my channel, a whole ton of. Just to give some context, this video that you're watching right now is going to be our last stretch of a 4,000 plus mile road trip, uh, picking up where we left off in Aspen, Colorado. If you didn't see the last video, you can click on the link above. It'll be a vlogging experience of what we do in Colorado, as well as our drive back home and our Model Y. This video is going to cover around 1,200 miles of that 4,000 plus mile road trip. Um, because it's so long, I added segments, so if you want to skip and look at different parts, you can. I want to reiterate that I'm thankful for all of those that have subscribed. Since that video, we've actually gotten close to 200 subscribers. I want to continue putting out content about adventures in our Tesla and life in general. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you can see future videos. I'm planning on putting out a video about the wear and tear that we've seen on the Tesla since the 4,500 mile road trip. But we're also going to do a review of the Tesla Model Y in general after having driven it in 4,500 miles in less than two weeks. So stay tuned. With that being said, let's get back into the video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Hey guys, so we're going skiing today. As you guys can see, this is our new gear that we bought at RAI yesterday. Got our snow pants. These aren't our boots, but we got our goggles, some thermals underneath, and this is the first time skiing, so see you guys on the slopes. We're on the shuttle up to Aspen Snowmass. All of our equipment. We have lessons at, is it 10? 10 or 10.30? 10.15? 10. 10 o'clock we have lessons. It is 9.29 right now. Mm -hmm. Currently stuck. It's not moving, right? It's moving slowly. No, it's not moving. And we're running late. So hopefully, got hopefully we learn how to ski. We're in yet another gondola because we had to go down and come back up. We have to go all the way up to the top. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's really far. We're 30 minutes late. And we're gonna be like 40, 45 minutes late. So we might not even learn how to ski. And we paid 300 each. Great. Yeah, we paid, like she said, we paid $300 each person for Why these is lessons. So hard? It's very beautiful out here. I feel like everyone's never gonna use the poles. I mean, I saw a lot of kids not using poles going down this hill, too. Scared of heights, guys. Um, I'm gonna put this away before I freak myself out. I can't look down. She doing it. It's really snowy out here. So, in true uh, Aspen fashion, we are taking a break after our lessons to eat, but we're out faster. No heat lamp by us, but we have an umbrella because it is snowing out. I'm freezing. But we got hot chocolate, so we're excited about that. Gonna keep us warm out here. Finally got our hot food. It's gonna be nice and tasty. Thank you. I basically chugged our hot chocolate. So we got the pups. There's Mojo. Trust me, they were, they were way more excited to see us than they look now. They just don't want to be in the car anymore. But we only have a Three hour trip today. Oh, it's so sunny. Three hour trip today to get to Denver. We're going to stay at Brown Palace. Sounds weird. We're gonna drive through the rest of the mountains. We have to go back through Aspen to get there. Just wanted to show you guys the car though. It's in terrible condition. Just clean, cleanliness wise. The tires have a bunch of snow on them, of course, because they're not snow tires. See all the dirty snow on the on the back there. But also just looking at looking at the paint and how dirty that is. 
but you guys can see how much dirt from all the snow splashing everywhere. We haven't decided if we're gonna go hiking first. Just because we're probably passing so many hiking trails, it's about a three hour drive. So let's punch that in so I can show you guys. Go to Brown Palace, Denver, Colorado. So here it is, 106 miles. It says 106 miles. When I looked it up on a better route planner, it said 158. So that's weird. <laughs> All right, here it says 194. No supercharging stops. And it says that we get there with 23% charge. Well, we have a lot of stops along the way we could make. But you guys can see, yeah, we're going through, it's taking us through Glenwood Springs. I think we came from there. But then we're going through Avon, which is close to Vail. Yeah, so we're passing through all these other ski towns. So Avon, Vail, Breckenridge, Keystone. There's no uh, range anxiety really because we have supercharger like I think it's like half an hour away and then another one there. So we'll see how how it deals in the snow or in the cold because it is. It says 32, but it's not 32. Yeah, it says 32, but it's actually 19 out. The car is still trying to figure out how it feels because it was in the garage for the longest. Which even though it was really expensive, even though it was fifty dollars a night for valeting. I think it was kind of worth it because we came during a snowstorm and cars got stuck. We saw like a Jeep that had to get towed out of some street parking. So we definitely wouldn't have survived and been able to get out easily if we did park on the street or we got sideswiped. That's another story I can tell you guys. My, my first car that I bought myself, it was a cheap car, like $2,000. It got sideswiped and like crashed into pretty badly on a Massachusetts like residential road. And so like it was just beyond repair. I, there wasn't worth spending money on that. So then I got the car before this Tesla, which was a Hyundai Tucson which had its own other side of problems. But now we're in a Tesla. We're gonna try to take care of it and not park it on Massachusetts roads during the winter because people suck. I really wanted to stop at some like some kind of trail, but I don't know, maybe we can just wait. We're definitely gonna go up here at some point because my brother lives in Greeley or Loveland. You guys will see some scenery along the way, I'm pretty sure. Hopefully it doesn't snow and hopefully roads are clear, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so if you guys see these green arrows, all right, now if you look at the autopilot, could you look down here? You see it showing up as green lights. I guess they would turn red if a lane was closed. I wonder how the autopilot or full, I wonder how autopilot would react to one of those arrows being red. The other interesting thing is um, autopilot said that that was an unsupported tunnel. So I don't know what that means. It basically just, was saying that it won't navigate an autopilot, but it still did the lane keep and everything else. Um, but once we exited, it went back to navigate an autopilot. So, Colorado, I don't know what you're doing with the Tesla maps. Fix your compatibility. So we pulled off because it said there's a scenic overlook. This is what it looks like. We're actually going to fly it, uh, the drone and see how it looks like from the drone. And as you guys can see, we're taking it off from... Uh, the top of the car just because it's really snowy all around so let's see how it looks from above all right so after some stressful times of not knowing if the road was closed or not i think the tesla navigation started um started doing some weird things where it's basically taking us in a big loop get off this exit go in the other direction get off and the first exit keep going in that loop. So that was stressful just because earlier we saw that there was a road closure near Vail, so we couldn't go through Vail. Um, but it seems like the road's fine. We got through that part, hopefully. Um, traffic seems okay. Windshield wipers are going off for some weird reason. finally made it out of traffic. We've been basically sitting in stop and go traffic for the past 30 minutes. But yeah, now it's starting to clear up. You guys can see the remnants of that, the little orange lines on the map. The whole time I had autopilot on, except for some sketchy times, but for the most part, autopilot helped power me through. Um, so that's also one benefit of the general 
enhanced autopilot that comes with um, all cars now by default without having to pay extra that's a nice thing to have with the stop and go traffic where you don't really have to worry about it i don't know if we're out of the woods yet hopefully we don't run into rush hour too when we get into denver and downtown denver but who knows interesting thing here is everybody's riding their brakes if you guys can see all those brake lights meanwhile we're not really riding brakes we are using our regenerative braking yeah, you guys can see we're so green um, our average right now is 218 over the past 30 miles it's probably going to be even better in the past five so yeah negative 96 in the past five miles um, on average makes sense that you know the ski resorts and all the ski mountains are at higher elevation than than Denver I guess Denver is called the mile high city so it's probably 5,000 feet or so I think that's how how many feet a mile is while Aspen was 7,000 feet and Vail was about 8,000 something in the towns that's not including like the actual elevation of the mountains that you're going up to ski down if we were coming from the other direction having to go all the way up we would need to charge a lot more that's a fun little thing with Tesla's is that sure you're gonna be stressed going up which if we ever move to Denver we'll, we'll see that we'll have that stress we'll deal with that um, going from lower elevation up to the ski resorts or the ski mountains but it's pretty cool to see that we can drive for three and a half almost four hours over 160 180 miles I don't know what the total trip was but we can drive for four hours without having to charge just because we're getting all of this extra energy from the regenerative braking having to go downhill you can see huge huge drop in energy um, I'm guessing we we're going up at that point but now along the 15 and 30 mile mark if you see where the current dot is it's actually up, up it's an uptrend right now right it's, it's headed upwards which means that we're gaining energy um, at this point all right so we're at the Lakewood Colorado superchargers this one is actually a 250 kilowatt um, supercharger so one of the newer b3 ones but I've actually never seen the car charge this fast. This is the highest we've ever seen it get up to. It reached around like 201 kilowatts. We're not charging to 100 right now. It's set to 100. Probably set it down to around the 80 if that's about it. Nice thing about this one is it has, um, I think, 12 stalls. 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Actually like 16 stalls. That's half of them and that's the other half. So there are four Teslas in total here. All right, since last charge, we drove 201.2 miles, uh, used about 54 kilowatt hours of the battery. Our efficiency was pretty good, 268 watt hour miles. So that's definitely because we were going down the mountains and just decreasing in elevation. We arrived with the 21% that it predicted, so it was pretty accurate and it seems like Tesla really take, took into account the elevation um, drop and the energy that we got back from it. We're in Boulder, we just finished brunch, but basically we just got a notification. I appreciate everybody that subscribed so far and I definitely want to keep growing. Paco Lopez just subscribed four minutes ago. He is our 100th subscriber. It's a call for celebration. Thank you for everybody that subscribed so far. Um, we'll keep putting out content, we'll keep listening to you guys, whatever you guys want to see about the Tesla or any other gadgets that we, we play around with. Uh, talking about gadgets, we were actually on the way to uh, pick up a one wheel, and I guess this is very fitting because it could be our 100th subscriber celebration. We're both getting one wheels. Yay. We're just balling out on this trip. You guys will see us rolling around, supercharger stops and everywhere else. So this is the XR the bigger longer range version but I just thought it was interesting because I never saw one in person the wheel is actually so huge all right we gotta find the boxes so we got it we'll unbox it and take it for a ride at some point I gotta charge it probably so we're at Estes Park supercharger Estes Estes I don't know I think there are six stalls here so we're charging we're getting about a rate of 75 to 80 ish kilowatts it's all right, I think this is a 120 kilowatt max rate supercharger. Also just heard the news of uh, there being a new 72 stall Shanghai supercharger. But either way, 
let's get to it. We're uh, taking a break. We have about 20 minutes of charge. We have our new toys. Quick start good. Always wear a helmet. You know, a friend to get started, come up, balance, blah, blah, blah. We, we need the app. I think that's the biggest blocker. So never mind, we're not gonna play with our one wheels I quite yet. This is where the supercharger is. It's kind of like tucked in. It was actually really hard to find. It's tucked in between like, I guess, condos and apartment, not apartments, and hotel, resort, place. To push back for different things. So this one's if like it's oh, at a it's, full if you're battery. Going, yeah. This one's if it's at a full battery and you're going downhill for regenerative braking, it'll be like no. So you have to spend some of the energy and then do it again. Then there's the one that you said, which is like the speed one. You're going too fast. You have to slow down or you can fall off. <laughs> this guy, there's no, there's no following square, so we don't know what happened to him. Hopefully he's okay. <laughs> he just keeps falling downhill though. That's worse. Everybody on the subreddit for one wheel was saying like, oh, I, I can't afford a Tesla, so I got a one wheel, blah, blah. Then people say, well, if you think about the range that a one wheel has and how much you're paying for that range, it's actually way more expensive than a Tesla. And one wheels are super expensive. And there's a Tesla that's coming to charge. With a doggy in the back. Everybody has their dogs. All right, well, we need to figure out where we're going. It's been sitting at 15 minutes for the longest. Uh, Supercharging. Check out the beautiful drive down from Estes Park. We're going to Greeley, Colorado to go visit my brother. But the cool thing is it's a, I believe it was 60 mile about, 60 mile drive, almost two hours, an hour 40. I think it was an hour and 40 minute drive. It's really tough driving through these like windy roads, but then it's also nerve wracking to just let autopilot do a lot of it. In addition to people tailgating you if, you, if you're going too slow because you want to let autopilot do its thing. Well, first off, what it predicted us to get there, we left with 70% charge from the Estes Park supercharger um, and predicted that we would get there with 60% charge. If you look at the graph, it's going upwards before we start declining and losing energy. Definitely a tough ride for the dogs. They hate these windy roads. Collie can't stay still. Colorado is overall like a beautiful state. And I'm sure you guys will see that through all the other videos, but we'll check back in with you guys once we get to the bottom. All right, so we are about 10 minutes away from our destination to Greeley, but you guys can see the the graph of how we did. Um, we definitely dipped below average, but we collected a little bit of energy there. Um, and so right now we're above average at what we thought we were gonna be. I think originally it said 60% charge. It's a 60% charge at the destination. It's like 61 now. Overall for the past 30 miles, it was 171 watt hour per mile. Um, which is really good. You can see that it started off pretty well, but started picking up once we actually had to drive 70 miles per hour with no downhill. All right, so we got to stop to stop at Target. We'll be checking in with my brother, seeing him, and then going back to Denver for New Year's, guys. It's New Year's Eve today. So. All right, good morning. So we are we just checked out of our hotel, the Brown Palace, I'm in downtown Denver. I mean, I, I wouldn't recommend for the price. It's supposed to be a four-star hotel. So don't get fooled by the reviews. Uh, we left our own. Either way, we're leaving and we punched in our home address so we can get an idea of how long this trip will take. Basically from Denver, we're going straight back to Fayetteville, Arkansas, back to our house, completing this uh, 4,000 plus mile road trip that we've been doing. First stop is in Limon, Lyman, Colorado. Um, we're going to get there with 15% charge, so right now we have 52% charge. We're not starting with a full battery. So it's going to be about 804 mile trip, 13 hours and 34 minutes with charging and need to check how many super stop chargers, super, super charger, yeah, hopefully it's not a super stop. Um, how many super charger stops we have? Only one in Colorado, three in Kansas, one in Oklahoma. Um, two of them are saying that they're going to be 40 minutes long. So we're probably going to try to break that up by using a better route planner. We probably don't want to set a supercharger for that long. But this is the final stretch of the road trip. And we're excited to get home. Not so excited for the drive, really, since we're trying to do it all in one day. But we're leaving Denver, and we're on our way home. What was that place? Limon. Limon. Lyman. So we just left Lyman Supercharger. Lyman, Colorado Supercharger. Limon. Limon. There's no accent over the O though, but I want to call, I want to say Limon. It was pretty slow, it was like 65 kilowatts, even though I think it's 150 max. Did a little um, testing of the one wheel, trying to see if I can learn. 
it's very scary. I didn't want to like go fast in front of people and fall. Now we're headed over. I think we were there for like 25 minutes, maybe 30. I don't know, at least 20 minutes. Um, it was super slow. There was like four other Teslas there, at least. Um, the next one up is Goodland, Kansas. So we're actually an hour and 24 um, away from Goodland. Pretty uh, kind of flat, a little hilly, but I feel like there's going to be a lot of wind out here, especially if you look into the uh, into the distance, right? Look into the distance. Once we get over this hill, there are a bunch of windmills. So that probably is some kind of indication that it's pretty windy out here. Here in Goodland, Kansas, we finally made it to Kansas and left Colorado. We're on the way home, this is for sure. We have 16% charge. Um, I think it predicted like 26%, 25%, so we definitely didn't drive too well. Um, estimates that we'll need to charge for 25 minutes here, so let's get it plugged in. And yeah, I'm gonna walk the dogs, get a shake, and ride the one wheel. We're getting 102 kilowatt rate of charge right now, but earlier we were getting about 130, which is nice. Basically, we're the only ones at the supercharger. I think there are only six stalls. But yeah, um, not gonna show you my one wheel skills yet. I uh, kind of wiped out. It's definitely getting tricky to learn, but we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully we both can get into it. Otherwise, we just dropped mad money on on a toy that's gonna hurt us a bunch. We let them off. There's a dog park off the side of the highway, and no idea in, in between superchargers, but we wanted to let them run around a little bit. Super windy, super cold, but she has her nice jacket, so she doesn't feel it. I feel it because my legs are just lagging. Leg and legs. <laughs> All right, here we go. We are in Salina, Kansas for this trip. We started with close to 70 close to 70 percent it expected us to get here with 22 percent and we did i think we just did a little bit worse than what it predicted as you guys can see the gray line is above the green which is what our actual graph is so somewhere in topeka we'll be stopping to charge and then it'll be a 30 minute drive from there to our hotel so we're here in topeka kansas um just pulled off to the supercharger we basically ran into some unexpected snow so if you guys see basically the supercharger is not even plowed out yet i think it recently snowed tonight it was pretty messy getting off the highway um uh, the supercharger is pretty stiff too the setup for this um supercharging location is kind of interesting there's four superchargers here then if you guys look over there there's four more and there's another uh i think model y over there charging other weird coincidence is that it's in a parking lot of an Arby's. That's the drive through right there. And I think this is the second supercharger we've been to where basically it's in a parking lot of an Arby's. I guess it's a Kansas thing. They like to have superchargers near Arby's. I didn't know it was uh Yeah, let's see if we find any other patterns as we road trip around the US. We're getting 133. So this is probably a 150 kilowatt supercharger. Um, it says we're going to charge for 30 minutes and we're going to be staying 30 minutes away. Um, so this is the closest supercharger nearby and we'll have to continue the trip tomorrow morning without having come back here. There's another one that's in the direction we're going in Olath, Ol Olath, Kansas. We'll check back in with you guys when we get to the hotel. Our final feast before the dieting for the wedding weekend. <laughs> So we just got back from filming some snow shots. We're in uh, Lawrence, Kansas. This is where we stopped to sleep. We have four more hours till we get back home. Watch this dog. We stopped and got breakfast at the Big Biscuit. Uh, apparently they have a few stores around the Kansas, Missouri area. And this is a Big Biscuit that she ordered. Chocolate waffle. Chip waffle with banana strawberries. And I have my whipped cream right here. Plus I got the hash browns. Eggs over medium with bacon. I got some kind of cinnamon roll. roll pancake. But everything looks good, so we're gonna dig in and we'll see you guys back on the road. So, it's extremely full after eating that huge breakfast. I, I always order way too much food. Made a quick stop at Starbucks to get her sister the cup that she wants from every state. 
But yeah, we're back on the road. Our final destination here is our house. Yeah. So it's gonna be a five hour drive. Right now we're at 57%. Uh, we came here with about a little bit above 60. So we'll see you guys at the Olaf Kansas Supercharger. All right, you guys see how there's arrows right there on this left lane? There's actually no arrows on the road. It was just because the lane has wetness and um, the lane has wetness and snow on there. So it's misinterpreting that. Hopefully that's fixed with the, the beta. So here we are at another high usage supercharger. There's four other Teslas here, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, it's 150 kilowatt max supercharger. We're only getting 65, even less now. We're gonna be here for a while. Um, says 30 minute charge. A big piece of that is just because there's so many other Teslas here. They definitely need more superchargers around this area. It seems like, uh, I would assume a lot of these people aren't road tripping. It might just be local people. There's a few in the Kansas City area, but I don't think there's enough. I think Kansas City is big enough and there's a service center that's delivering Teslas. So there's probably going to be a lot of Tesla action around this area that they'll need to start building more. One of the downfalls for sure, as people point out, is that, you know, there's not as many superchargers as there are gas stations. And this is one of the times where, you know, it would be nice to be able to go to like the supercharger a few blocks away. We are just now leaving Olaf, Kansas supercharger. We've been here for at least 30 minutes. We're pretty much like the last Tesla here. Everybody else left. There's one over there. The reason why we stayed here so long was because we were kind of concerned about what it's saying we'll get to Joplin with, which is our next stop. So yeah, two and a half hour drive, 161 miles total. It's going to be a close call. I think either way, we'll have to keep an eye on it as we go down this two and a half hour drive. Um, the nice thing is we'll be an hour away from home once we do finish charging in Joplin. We've never actually tried pushing it to like, you know, getting there with 1% or even five less than 5%. So getting there with 8% predicted definitely means we're gonna get there with less. Um, that's the nice thing too, is that even, even though it predicts it at that rate, if you do go slower, it's gonna suck for driving on the highway because you know, you're gonna have to be in the slow lane. You're gonna have to be the person that everybody passes one of the downfalls for sure but at least by doing that you know that you will get to your destination basically going through the whole battery so let's see how we do so nice thing with autopilot is that so far it's been handling this the snow pretty well it's not heavy snow it's not like a snowstorm or anything there hasn't been any concerns yet i think the one thing that does concern me is it, it's 30 de it's 30 degrees outside anything that is slippery or was wet earlier could potentially be frozen so there could be ice on the ground which is, is I'm sure once autopilot comes across it and the wheels slip that could be a dangerous situation the visibility seems to not impact it um, we also aren't in some heavy traffic so I would assume that that would be a bigger issue if we were um, bumper to bumper traffic but you can't really see the bumper ahead of you and so it's it's an easy test for autopilot but it's also still proving itself in this moment we're in the red six percent left we made it to the joplin supercharger battery power idle charge now to ensure vehicle will start and avoid potential battery damage usually we Ooh. see it's cold you gotta charge because sentry mode won't work usually it's like a sentry mode work, yeah. right yeah i've seen people drive down to zero percent and still drives a little bit and then make it to a supercharger or to a charger in general but yeah so we're here for 20 minutes energy we were doing about for the past 30 miles is about 355 um, watt hours per mile but overall the trip i think we did a little bit worse than we predicted at first you can see we're above the gray so we're doing pretty decent you can see the gray i think it predicted us originally at eight percent but we ended up with six so we're below that the predicted line And we're about to eat the rest of our breakfast because we got way too much. Didn't mention this, but this is where it all began. This was actually our first supercharger. Oh yeah. This was our first supercharger stop when we first picked up our Model Y, when we first picked up Cardi T and we had to drive it back down three hours from Kansas City 
Tesla Center down to Fayetteville, Arkansas. But yeah, this is where it began, and this is where our road trip is now going to end, which is a nice little circle. 79 miles, an hour and 18 minutes. Can we make it? Can we finish this two-week road trip spanning across 4,000 plus miles? Hopefully. I mean, I'm kind of tired, but... <laughs> we better make it. What? <laughs> I take back what I was saying about autopilot. Um, earlier we were driving uh, there's a lot of water being kicked up because it's kind of snowing and the roads are really wet what happened is it said that the front radar visibility is uh, decreased or what did it say I think even lidar wouldn't be able to sense it'll be able to sense the objects it wouldn't be able to sense how to stay in the lanes so I don't think it's a it's a it will solve everything either guess what he's doing well because you told me that you saw what the issue was before it even became an issue. <laughs> oh, I see the see the radar blocked by snow, but I'm not going to unblock it. Uh, it's probably going to work. Yeah, so she told me, oh, it's it's definitely the sensor. It's definitely the radar because when we were when she was coming back from the bathroom, she was like, oh, I saw a bunch of snow on there. I didn't think it mattered. This is what she's talking about. This is why it said the radar was blocked. Let's get this off. Oh my god, it's just a bunch of a. Uh, it's really stuck to it. It's very cold and dirty. Ah, I think those are the two main ones. You guys see the little little holes there. Hopefully that works. Oh, you guys are probably asking why is why is he doing this? It's dangerous. Why would he want to use autopilot while it's terrible weather out here? It's not really it's not really snowing that badly. As we're starting to move more towards Arkansas, I think it's slowing down and the lanes are visible. I've been looking at the, the visualization on the screen, so let's try it out, but we'll give it a shot. I was talking to the audience already and telling them out there, they're probably wondering in their heads, why would you want to get autopilot working again when you just said the conditions are bad? The thing is, if you look at the, the visualization, you can see that it's making out the lines pretty well. I think the camera's doing a decent job. I'll definitely be paying attention. I'll be looking at the roads as you can see by the blue little steering wheel, it's now working again, um, just clearing those front radar or front sensors did the trick. And the next hour and two minutes will hopefully be a smooth ride. See you guys at our house. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, forgot that you guys were in the suitcase. I'm sure you guys want to see all the stats of the whole trip overall. So let's go back to the car. I bet you guys didn't think that we can make it that last hour or that last 70 miles out of the whole 4,000 mile trip. Well, guess what? We're home. We made it, we're back. Now that I got you guys out of the suitcase, I'm sure you guys want to see some of the stats that we had. Here's the full time. Mojo really wants to go in, but let's show you guys the final count of how many miles we drove over the past two weeks any guesses anybody all right drum roll please winter road trip these are the stats so 4,642 miles driven we should have just made it the even 5,000 we should have driven a little bit more 1,559 kilowatt hours used imagine if this is a 85 kilowatt battery like I've seen elsewhere or I've seen in articles, then divide that by, I don't have a calculator on hand, but that's a lot of charging, 336 watt hours per mile. So it's not the greatest, but it's also not terrible. I know we've had, we've brought that down probably when we were in the mountains coming, going all around Colorado. That's about 1100 miles going into the trip. So our, our Model Y Cardi T, Cardi T? Cardi T. But this is our all time stats our efficiency is a little bit better as you guys can see we didn't use our model y much before this road trip and now it's seen a lot of the u.s and a lot of different things on this road trip we're gonna get back to our normal lives feed our dogs feed ourselves and give them a little bit of happiness after this 4600 mile road trip yummy you're eating too Mojo's certainly happy to be home, and so is Kali. Look what we got them. 
but we had to stop by Target on the way back to make their return home even happier. So this is Collie's because she's a uh, the fluffer, and this one's Mojo's because he's a thrasher. You'll see what he what he does with it. Thanks for watching, everyone. As you guys can see, they're super excited about their toys. We're super excited to be home. Until next time, have a good day, everyone.